Hi, this is Dr. Don. I want to go over the process for constructing in Excel the expected monetary value payoff table. Now these tables you may see uh, just in routine problems about expected monetary value, but they're also linked sometimes to decision tree models and also to Monte Carlo method models. So uh, it's uh, this problem I'm going to show you should be helpful uh, to learn the technique. And I'm violating PowerPoint rule number one. A lot of words, but let's read the problem here just so you'll understand. Fast Bakery specializes in croissants. Early each morning, the bakery manager, Fred, must decide how many croissants to bake for the day. Each croissant costs a dollar ten to make and sells for two eighty five. Croissants left over at the end of the day can be sold the next day for seventy five cents. Good old Fred has captured a lot of data and he's recorded the daily demand over the last year and he's calculated the associated probabilities with the techniques that we've seen before for discrete distributions. And he's come up with a table here that shows in increments of 100 the probability for those particular demands on any given day. You have to do two things. We need to help Fred determine the optimal quantity to bake each day, assuming that the unsold croissants, the leftovers, can be sold in the, in the Dale store. And then we need to recalculate it, assuming they cannot be sold. Given the title of this video, we're going to construct a payoff table and determine expected monetary values. And we're going to use the basic, basic model in finance and business, revenue minus cost equal profit. Now I've taken that data and transferred it into Excel and already uh, built out the table and I'll show you how it's constructed. Up here in the left we've got our historical demand table which is the the number of croissants sold on a given day and the probability of selling that amount, that demand. Down here we've got the unit costs, how much they ask when the croissants are fresh and then what the leftover price. And we've got two variances there. One, they can sell it for 75 cents in the Dale store. And the other option, they can't sell it. So it's got a zero leftover price. So let's break down that basic model, profit equal revenue minus cost. In this problem, revenue has two components. The asking price revenue plus the leftover price revenue. Asking price is if they can get, they sell at the asking price, they're fresh, and that's the asking price times demand or the number baked, whichever is smaller. The leftover price revenue component is just the number left over times the leftover price. And of course, cost is equal to the, the number baked times the unit cost. Looking at this asking price revenue, we've got to find the smaller of the two, demand or the number baked, you can use a min statement to do that. And you want the minimum of baked or demand, and we multiply that by the asking price, and that's the asking price revenue. On the leftover revenue, we need an if statement. If baked is greater than demand, then we have leftovers. If we have leftovers, the number leftover is baked minus demand. We multiply that times the leftover price. If baked is less than demand, then we don't have any leftovers, so the leftover revenue would be zero, and that's why we put a zero in the if statement. Taking that concept and then converting it into a formula to get the sale profit, we just have the, the asking price revenue, which is the min of baked or demand times the asking price, minus the cost, which is baked times unit costs, plus our if statement to get the leftover revenue. If baked greater than demand, then we take the difference and multiply that times leftover price. Otherwise, we just have a zero times leftover price, which means we have no leftover revenue. And then we convert that into the typical Excel formulas. This is the formula in this first payoff cell, which is the intersection of 
a baked amount of 1500 and a demand of 1500 which means there would be no leftovers. The formula that we've converted into Excel terminology is just the minimum of the baked or the demand times the asking price minus the cost, which is the baked times the unit cost, plus the revenue from the leftover, which is the, if the baked is greater than demand, then we have a difference and we multiply that difference, the leftovers times the leftover price. Otherwise, we have a zero times the leftover price. And that gives us $1,725 of profit for that particular cell, that intersection. And through the use of locking down either the columns or the rows, you can see that in some cases we froze everything. In other cases, we just, again, lock either the column or the row. And you can figure that out. You know how to do that copy that across to get the cell profits for each one of these intersections of a baked quantity and a demand. I wanted to pause right here for a second in our ongoing problem about the bakery and talk about this profit matrix or this uh, table that we have. This is the part you would use if you're going to connect to a decision tree. Remember in a decision tree we're looking for payouts or profits at the end of the branches, and the branches have probabilities assigned to them. So we will get our expected value in the decision tree if we just work with this information. You don't want to have the expected monetary values in your decision tree endpoints because then you'd be using the probabilities twice. So just use these basic profits for each one of the cells in your decision trees if you're using this as a prep for a decision tree model. Okay, let's talk about the expected monetary value though for this problem that we need in order to tell Fred what to order. The expected monetary value for the, inter, inter, the, the baked quantity and the demand is a sum product. It's just multiplying the probabilities for each demand times the row profits for those demands. It's just, in other words, 0.01 times 1725 plus 0.05 times 1725. And it sums those up to give a total uh, value there of 1742. We copy that formula down each row for our bake quantity by looking for the largest, the, the maximum value in this column. That would be the order quantity for Fred to order would be, would be to this case order 2000 or bake 2000 would give him more profit than any others. The second half of this problem we would, would do the exact same thing except instead of using the leftover price of 75 cents we would change the cell reference to this zero leftover price. Use the exact same formulas just change the cell reference to that cell and it would calculate and, and give us probably a new optimal order quantity or bait quantity if Fred cannot sell unsold things in the Dale store. So this is the uh, payoff table for generating the expected monetary value for, for this particular problem to help Fred pick the best path. Hope this helps.